In this video, we're going to introduce uh, one of the most widely used tools in machine learning, namely principal component analysis, also known as PCA. PCA is an unsupervised machine learning algorithm that aims at simplifying the data by looking at what seems to matter the most. Typically, data in this case will be some very high dimensional vectors x1 until xn in some uh, vector space rp, where p is typically large. And this happens all the time. For instance, for typical images of the web, we have p equals to 1 million. At least this is what would happen if you consider megapixel images. Now, there are three major troubles with large values of p. First, high dimensional vectors are hard to visualize. This is particularly a trouble for data visualization, which I'm told is pretty hot in companies these days. Second, large values of p can lead to long computations, even when we use supercomputers. Some machine learning algorithms are not scalable, which means that although they perform well for small values of p, they can be extremely slow as soon as p is not so small. Third and finally, large values of p often lead to overfitting. Overfitting is this weird phenomenon that emerges when we use too sophisticated models to explain data too much in details. When overfitting occurs, we obtain some seemingly clever ways to explain the data, but in fact, when we apply our clever ways to new data that were not in our training set, we find out that clever ways actually behave poorly on all the data. So typically, don't use the basic linear regression when p is as large as n or even larger. You will inevitably fall into the trap of overfitting. For these reasons, it may be useful to simplify the high dimensional complexity of the feature space by projecting all the data points onto some lower dimensional subspace, which will tell us what are the main divergent features of the data. To do so, we will typically be interested in the directions in RP along which the data varies the most. And this means that we first need to compute the so-called covariance matrix of the data. The covariance matrix sigma is going to be a p by p matrix. We call that p was the dimension of the feature space of uh, the vectors x1 and x2 and so on. Each of these vectors is p-dimensional. And so sigma is a matrix p by p where sigma ij tells us how coordinate i varies with respect to coordinate j. For instance, sigma 1, 1 is going to be the variance of the first entries of the vectors x1 until xn. In other words, sigma 1, 1 is going to be the variance of the collection of data of real valued data x11, x21, x31, and so on until xn1. And this can be computed uh, by the estimator, the classic estimator, uh, 1 over n minus 1 times the sum over k of the xk1 minus the average of all the x something 1, and we square it all. This is the, the basic formula to compute variance. And similarly, uh, or perhaps more generally, uh, sigma ij is going to be the covariance between the data x1i until xni and x1j until xnj, so between two coordinates i and j. And this is computed with the, the formula here, or the classical formula of the covariance. Now, these formulas can be a bit overwhelming. Don't be overwhelmed by this, easy to say, right? What's important to take away from all of it is that sigma ij really tells us about how the ith coordinate varies with respect to the jth coordinate. In particular, if the i and j coordinate actually record the same kind of data, the covariance sigma ij is going to be huge. It's going to be the same as the variance of the i coordinate. But if i and j tells us completely different things about the data, then typically they may be uncorrelated and the covariance would then be equal to zero. Interestingly, the covariance matrix sigma is a symmetric B, p by p matrix since the way i varies with j is equal to the way j varies with i. 
And Euclidean geometry tells us that this implies the existence of an orthogonal basis E1 until Ep, such that when sigma is written in this orthonormal basis, sigma is then a diagonal matrix. In other words, in this new coordinate system, variations along the EI axis are uncorrelated with variations along the EJ axis. And this is pretty cool because it means that we have good reasons to think of the different coordinates in sort of independent manner. It's not exactly independent, but uncorrelated is uh, a first step towards uh, independence. Another cool thing about these new bases is that the covariance matrix S written in this basis is now a diagonal matrix, and each entry of this diagonal tells us how much the data varies along the EI axis. In particular, by now ordering the vectors EI of the basis from the largest value of the diagonal to the smallest, we call them eigenvalues in linear algebra, we know what directions contain the largest discrepancies in the data. Intuitively, these directions are the meaningful directions, and it then makes sense to sort of ignore the other direction, especially the, the one associated with very small values uh, of the eigenvalues of the diagonal matrix. So typically, PCA will then project the full p-dimensional space onto a smaller k-dimensional space that's made of the k-first vectors of the orthogonal basis. These vectors are called eigenvectors. The directions of the eigenvectors are the directions along which the data varies the most. And in particular, by now taking k equals 2, we can project our p-dimensional vector space into a two-dimensional space that we will be able to draw to, to make figures of and to, to do nicer PowerPoint presentations for your companies and stuff like that. Now this all makes PCA very cool. Like basically you, you capture the essence, the most important aspects of your data by using PCA. However, I cannot insist enough on the limits of this approach. Most crucially, PCA only makes sense if the p different coordinates of the vectors x1 until xn that we started with, in some sense, are on the same scale. In particular, you should not be comparing apples and bananas. Don't add up apples and bananas. The first coordinate should not be inputs in dollar units, while the second is a number of casualties and the third is the number of computers out there. You cannot have unrelated kinds of coordinate. If you do so, if you use unrelated kind of measure of units for the different coordinates, PCA is likely to give you meaningless results. So do use PCA in practice. It can be very useful, but be sure you use it in a relevant way. In particular, this means that you really need to make sure that the coordinates have at least the same units and that they are comparable in some sense.